Since it debuted in 2000, I've been in front of my television for every single episode. That's 41 seasons of Survivor. That's a lot of television. I am thrilled to welcome to the program today the first Canadian to ever play the game, the first Canadian to win as well, former Niagara Falls resident Erica Kasupanen. Erica, congratulations on your victory and on capturing the million dollar prize. Thank you so much. It is still surreal. A lot of surprises in this year's season. It was a shorter season, a lot of curves thrown at you. How did you handle that? And did you really just find out about those curves when we found out about them? Well, we found out about the length of the game a bit before the audience did, but not that far before. I think it was only a day or two before we started playing the game. So we had already been in Fiji, we had quarantined, and then Jeff told us that it was only going to be 26 days. So as someone who has watched the show since I was a kid and have always thought about the 39 day cycle, it's not a lot of time to process that the game is only 26 days. And I think that the mindset I took into the game was really knowing that whatever I knew about Survivor before was important, but I can't just rely on that. I have to figure out what to do with whatever gets thrown at me. I have to be flexible. I have to be open. I, I always have to be pivoting and looking for whatever new opportunity is presented whenever a crazy twist is thrown at us. As a big fan of the show, I've got to ask you because you mentioned his name, Jeff. I always wish that I would have had Jeff's job. What was he like to work with? Jeff looks and sounds the exact same in person as he does on TV and his wonderful calves. Jeff actually is so engaged with the show. And even when we were off camera, he would be chatting us up and chatting with us. Since I was the shortest and I was always at the front of the line going into challenges, I had a bit more time to be able to go back and forth with Jeff, which was a real treat. He's still excited to be there 21 years later. Talking about your game, you really flew under the radar for much of the time. You had a big game-changing moment, and that was that turn the clock back opportunity. Can you explain how that really led towards the, I guess, the final stages of you moving towards the win? I think that with the starting tribe I was on, the Luvu tribe, we were so dominant in challenges. It was almost a joke how good we were because we had people who were strong in everything. So it was almost like the Luvu tribe got a bit of a slower start to the game just because we were safe for the first bit of it and we never had to vote anybody out. So it's easy to fly under the radar when you're not voting. And then of course, a massive twist happens. I end up alone on exile and I have to decide if I want to turn back time or if I want to keep things as they are. And I took the opportunity to turn back time. And I think that that was, it was almost like a defining moment of the game because before that I had really defined my game by staying out of the trouble, flying under the radar. And in that moment, I had to really decide and stand up in front of all the other castaways, literally, and say, I'm here, I'm making a decision that's in my best interest, even if it can ruin the game of people I had just spent the first 12 days living with. And I think that after having done that and after having um, shown that I'm willing to make the decisions I need to um, that will change things up, First, I actually had to fly back under the radar because you don't want to be out in front too much. So after being up there, I had to go back under and kind of slip in with the majority again, but then afterwards start to build my way up again and show that I am someone with agency and decision-making power in the game. After that, right near the end, Deshaun threw you under the bus with Heather, someone that you had made an alliance with. Did you get deflated at that point? Did you think, oh my gosh, here I go. That's going to be the turning point the other way? So prior to Survivor, I had been a public relations and communications manager for almost 10 years. So a lot of that job is preparing people to either go into presentations or go into interviews where they're going to be asked tough questions. And sometimes those situations are hostile. And if you say the wrong thing, there could be bad consequences. So I'm... I made a career out of training people on how to deal with, you know, crazy stuff that's thrown at them when they're put on the spot. So even though in the moment I was so angry about what he was doing, especially as I had just told him I had saved him that night, I was also thinking, oh, he doesn't know who he's dealing with. So I'm really proud of the way that I was able to remain composed in that moment and ultimately just dismiss everything that he was saying in a way that 
made me look um, positive in front of the jury, but then it also really discredited him in front of the jury. Here in Niagara Falls, uh, you probably know that they organized an event for people to watch the finale. Where did you watch the finale? I was watching the finale here in Toronto. I rented out a theater and I invited my family and my friends. So there were so many people. I almost, because of COVID, we couldn't have the same finale experience that people have had year after year on Survivor. So I thought, how can I create something similar here for my friends and family? So it was a lot of fun to be able to celebrate that moment with everybody. And at the same time, I actually didn't tell my parents anything about how I did on the show. I never even told them how far I got. So it was so much fun seeing their reaction and seeing that even though my mom um, was stressed out every week thinking I would get voted out, she realized that she actually had nothing to be stressed out about at all. <laughs> how hard was it for you to keep this secret? It, it was rough. I mean, there'd be some moments where I'd go to, you know, a, a Thanksgiving dinner with my family and think, oh, they have no idea they're sitting at the table with a survivor winner. But then there's other times where it feels lonely because you want to talk about all the things that are on your mind watching the show and you can't really talk to anybody about it and no one really understands. Um, so there'd be some moments where I thought, okay, maybe I'll tell one person. But in the end, I held firm and seeing the way that my family reacted to watching me win, it was completely worth it. I wouldn't trade that for anything. If I were to contact some of your classmates from St. Paul High School in Niagara Falls, would they remember you as an outdoorsy person? How hard was it living on that island for the time that you did? I don't think anyone would describe me as outdoorsy at all. I think the only times I've gone camping have been when I've been on vacation and there's been a guy that can do the outdoorsy stuff and I just say, please and thank you. Uh, so it was rough. It, I was not in my element at all while I was out there. And I think that especially after having lived on exile and really having to do all of the chores myself and having to build fire and to feed myself, I learned that even though I'm not good or really interested in doing any of that outdoor stuff, if I really put my mind to it, I'm capable. That in itself is a life-changing experience, but being a winner must have really changed your life. Are you looking forward to applying, I guess, this accomplishment to your future? You're still only, what, 32 years old? Yes, I'm still 32, even though I know I look a lot younger. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited because I think that first I'm in the phase where I'm really celebrating. There's a lot of people in Canada who are so excited that I was able to bring the win home. The first time a Canadian resident was out there, she was able to bring the win home. So I think there's a lot of people who are still celebrating. And then I, I am looking forward to what the next chapter look like, looks like and bringing not only, you know, the, the title with me, but also all of the new things that I've learned about myself and the new strength that I've gained from this experience.